Hey there guys, Rich here, Keto Pro. I've decided to do a quick video on what to look for in a keto electrolyte. There are so many substandard products available with clever marketing that it can quickly become a minefield in regards to selecting the correct electrolyte. So here's my quick guide. Are your electrolytes actually electrolytes or are they sugar water? Many of the brands on the market contain more sugar than they do electrolytes. So we need to avoid these, as well as brands that contain compounds such as aspartame, sucralose, dextrose, dextrin, maltodextrin, as some of these will elicit a higher insulin response than sugar itself. Do your electrolytes contain polyols or any other sweetener? Not all polyols are created equal. Things like sorbitol, maltitol, and xylitol can still be absorbed by as much as 65%. Erythritol and stevia are the best options. Avoid poor quality ingredients. For example, avoid electrolytes that contain magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide carries a low bioavailability of around 4%. Look for more bioavailable sources, such as magnesium citrate or magnesium glycinate. Do your electrolytes contain calcium? Avoid electrolytes that contain calcium, unless you're using them to slow the absorption of another nutrient or as a chelating agent in order to prevent the absorption of iron if you summer with hemochromatosis, for example. Calcium supplementation increases risk of kidney stones, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, and cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease by as much as 15%. Now, this study found that dietary calcium intake between 700 to 1,000 milligrams per day or supplementary intake of 1,000 milligrams per day significantly increased a person's risk of cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease, which can lead to heart attack. But don't we need calcium supplementation in order to strengthen our bones and increase bone mineral density? No. This is a fallacy. This is a lie that we've been told. These studies show supplementation doesn't do any of this. We obtain all of the calcium we need from our diet. An egg, for example, contains around 25 milligrams. 50 grams of cheese contains around 350 milligrams. And even beef contains around 60 milligrams. So it's easy to see how calcium overload is achieved through supplementation. But we can clearly get all the calcium we need through living a healthy ketogenic lifestyle. So avoid electrolytes that contain calcium. Calcium alone isn't enough to build bone. Calcium absorption to the bone is directly correlated with salt and protein as bone is mineralized protein. We can't build bone without protein, without salt. So we need minerals and protein. Bone is mineralized protein. We can even reverse things like osteoporosis uh, with increasing sodium and protein, which brings me on to sodium. Sodium is super important. We shouldn't fear sodium. As this study highlights, this study covers over 100,000 participants over 17 countries and shows an inverse association with sodium consumption and all-cause mortality, meaning the less sodium you consume, the higher your risk of death. Aim for a supplement that has a high sodium concentration. The issue with sodium is that it depletes potassium. So the more we take, the more potassium we need. Now, the reason is much of the sodium we consume re-enters the body, up to 90% in fact of sodium is pulled back into the blood through four points in the nephrons in the kidneys, um, but potassium not so much. So we need two to four times the volume of potassium to sodium. Now, beef contains around 70 milligrams of sodium uh, and over 300 milligrams of potassium, a ratio of around four to one. So we can get much of the potassium requirements from our animal-based products that we eat every day, live in a healthy ketogenic lifestyle. But now we're adding salt to our meals to avoid things like keto flu uh, because we know and now understand how important sodium is. But the issue is with this, that the extra sodium is pushing uh, the potassium-sodium ratio out of whack. So we need lots of potassium in our electrolytes. Look for a supplement that has no less than half the potassium to the sodium but the closer to the sodium concentration, the better. So if your electrolytes contain less than half the volume of potassium to sodium, throw them in the bin. Now, for example, if a supplement contains around 1,000 milligrams of sodium, we want at least 500 milligrams of potassium or higher. My recommendation for the best keto electrolytes is in the link below. Any questions, check them in the comments. Thank you very much.